Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Anoop, and today I'm excited to talk with you all about our work on using unallocated cloud resources for running long and uninterruptible workloads. This is joint work with folks at CMU and Microsoft. So cloud deployments today are underutilized. To provide an illusion of elasticity, clouds are provisioned for peak demand. And when there are variations in demand, this leads to around 20 to 30% hardware sitting unallocated or unsold. And so there are techniques like spot VMs, oversubscription, or serverless functions that aim to monetize these resources, but they still leave a lot of resources un uh, unmonetized. And so to fix that, a recent advancement in this line of work is Harvest Virtual Machines, or HVMs in short. These VMs grow and shrink in their capacity to expose all the unallocated cloud capacity. Our work mostly deals with how uh, e exploring challenges in using these new VMs for running workloads. And so before I talk about our work, I'll give brief background on Harvest VMs. So here I've shown a snapshot of servers in a data center with some regular high priority or on-demand VMs allocated to the servers. When Harvest VMs are requested, they're co-located with regular VMs and take up any unallocated resources on the servers. When new regular VMs are requested, Harvest VMs shrink in their capacity to make room for the regular, uh, regular VMs. And when regular VMs are terminated, Harvest VMs can now grow to take up the newly freed resources. From the cloud provider's perspective, it gives them a way to monetize their unallocated capacity, which was previously unmonetized. And users get VMs that are bigger than prior offerings at a much lower price point. And so this abstraction seems especially promising for large-scale scientific applications such as those in genomic analysis, weather, or seismic simulations. These workloads are very important from a societal perspective and also have a huge market with majority of the cloud providers pushing to bring these workloads in the cloud. Traditionally, these workloads have been perceived as costly to run on the cloud and have been running on on-prem clusters. And so from this perspective, we believe Harvest VM are a nice solution for overcoming the cost and capacity concerns for these workloads. However, we went, when we went and ran these workloads on Harvest VMs, they did not quite run well out of the box. The key issue was that these applications are difficult to checkpoint or migrate. These applications rely on a lot of domain-specific libraries, making application-level checkpointing difficult. These also have large working sets and side effects outside their containers, which makes full containers or full VM checkpointing difficult. And this, the result is that if we have to interrupt these applications, they're required to restart from scratch and any work is wasted. This leads to poor performance on Horace VMs. So to better understand this, let's go back to our original picture and zoom into the view of a Horace VM user. So what these users see is VMs that vary in capacity over time. So that's basically a time series of resources. And when we have to run tasks, they may run fine without any issues, but if the Harvest VM shrinks, tasks are preempted, and since these workloads are hard to checkpoint, they have to be restarted from scratch, wasting any progress made. And we find that due to such effects, these workloads slow down by around 1.5 times on average. And unfortunately, existing techniques do not suffice to curb these slowdowns. So I've already described techniques like checkpointing, migration, replication are infeasible for these workloads. Now, there are techniques uh, that mitigate spot VM pre preemptions. They'll often exploit how VMs are priced, and these don't gener necessarily generalize to harvest VMs. There's also techniques to dynamically change the level of parallelism for these workloads, that often affects their correctness, which is unacceptable. And so in this work, we ask, 
how can customers make the best use of Harvest VMs for executing these long, uninterruptible workloads? And we answered this question by building our system called SlackShed. So we be began our work by characterizing Harvest VMs and workloads to see, to understand their behavior and see how they may interact. And our characterization revealed opportunities to improve the execution of workloads on Harvest VMs. Using which we designed Harvest VM aware scheduling and resource acquisition components. So in what follows, I'll delve deeper into our characterization, the opportunities, and our system design. So we characterized Harvest VMs from eight different production clusters and a collection of workloads from the genomics analysis and seismic imaging domains. We looked at various aspects of both the Harvest VMs and the workloads. However, in today's talk, I'll mostly focus on the interchange time of Harvest VMs or the time between consecutive changes of a Harvest VM. And for the workloads, I'll mostly focus on their task run times. Comparing these two quantities helps us understand how the Harvest VMs and workloads might interact. Because if the interchange time is short, or in other words, changes are happening very frequently, the tasks are likely to witness more resource changes. So let's start with Harvest VMs. I talked about this thing, interchange time. It is the time between two consecutive changes of a Harvest VM. So if you look at the time series and mark all the points where resources change, we can look at the time between consecutive changes, and that gives us samples to construct an interchange time distribution. So we plot this distribution. So in the following slide, I've shown the CDF of the interchange times. We find that the interchange time distribution has high variance. At any given time, there are harvest VMs at different points on the spectrum. There are Harvest VMs that are unstable, changing very frequently every few minutes. And there's also those that remain stable for hours or days. And this distribution emerges directly from the arrival, placement, and lifetimes of regular VMs running in the cloud. For instance, if regular VMs arrive and depart often, the interchange times will be short. So we do the same exercise for our workloads. So here I've shown the CDF of the task runtimes. We observe the task runtimes also have high variance. There are tasks that are short, run for a few minutes, and there are tasks which are long, can run up to an hour. So with these observations, if we go back to our roadmap, what we've seen so far is not all harvest VMs are the same. There's some harvest VMs which are stable, some are unstable, and we have a mix of these. Likewise, not all tasks are the same. There's a mix of short and long tasks. And we can use these observations to improve the execution of workloads. First, we can try to match longer tasks to more stable Harvest VMs. Second, we can maintain a pool of more stable Harvest VMs. To practically leverage these opportunities, we'll want to predict which Harvest VMs will remain stable, and in what follows, I'll describe how we build these components and how we solve our practical challenge. So our first opportunity in scheduling is to match longer tasks to more stable Harvest VMs. Let's see this with an example. So here I've shown two Harvest VMs, one stable and one unstable. And let's say at this time, a job is submitted with two concurrent tasks. If we schedule the longer task on the stable Harvest VM, that gives us a lower overall completion time for the job compared to if we scheduled it on the unstable Harvest VM. To make such decisions, however, we need to be able to know what the future resources on a Harvest VM look like, which are unknown to the user. For this, to solve this challenge, a key observation we make is that the interchange time distribution that we've been talking about is relatively stationary over time. So we plot this distribution for different days and different six hour intervals, and we find that it's very similar across time. And so even though we don't know exactly when Harvest VMs are going to change, just from looking at the historical distribution, we can know how future changes are distributed. 
and we can use this to guide scheduling and resource acquisition decisions. So let's see how we do that. So we look at this distribution and say we have a Harvest VM which hasn't changed since T time. So T time has elapsed since the Harvest VM has changed. We can use this information to compute the conditional probability that the Harvest VM changes before a task of duration D completes. For instance, if the Harvest VM hasn't changed in, let's say, 20 minutes, we can estimate what's the likelihood that it will change in the next 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and so on. We use such calculations to score different tasks to Harvest VM matchings, to capture the likelihood that tasks are preempted when running on a particular Harvest VM. And we pick matchings that minimize the overall preemption likelihood. To compute this score, we also incorporate estimates of task runtimes and likelihood that a change will be a growth or a shrink event. Uh, I encourage you to read these details in our paper. This distribution has another nice property, which brings us to our second opportunity of resource acquisition. If you look at two points on this distribution, we find that the longer a Harvest VM has stayed stable, the more likely it is to remain stable. And we can use this property to maintain a cluster of stable Harvest VMs. To do this, what we do is we intentionally deallocate the most recently changed Harvest VMs, as these are the most likely to be unstable. And we continuously request fresh Harvest VMs, eventually converging to a pool of stable Harvest VMs. So putting it all together, we build our system Slack Shed, which has a scheduling component that matches tasks to VMs, and it picks these matchings in a way that reduces task preemptions. And we have an acquisition component that maintains a pool of stable Harvest VMs by deallocating the most unstable or recently changed Harvest VMs. We implemented our ideas inside the Yarn Cluster Manager, and we evaluated it using uh, production Harvest VM traces and workload traces from the genomics and seismic domains. And we mostly measured improvements in job completion times and cost. So let's look at our evaluation. I'll first talk about just the scheduling component. So we compared our scheduler against capacity scheduler, which is the default scheduler in the Yarn Cluster Manager, and an Oracle scheduler that uses future knowledge to minimize completion times. So in the graph here, I've shown the tasks preempted over time as a fraction of total tasks to be done. We find that our distribution-based predictions are effective in reducing task preemptions. And these reductions directly translate to improvements in job completion times. So in the graph on the right, I've shown uh, the CDF of job completion times. We find that our scheduling component alone yields around a 27% reduction in the mean completion time and around a 44% reduction in the tail or 90th percentile job completion time. We also evaluate additional benefits that we can get from our resource acquisition component. So in the graph, I'll show reduction in the mean and 90th percentile job completion time compared to the capacity scheduler. So here, the red bar shows benefits solely from the acquisition component. This is because we're maintaining more stable Harvest VMs in the pool. The blue bar shows benefits solely from the scheduling component. And the purple bar shows that the benefits from these two components add up. This is because now the scheduler has more choices to place the longer tasks. And these benefits are very close to the Oracle scheduler. In our paper, we evaluate various other aspects of our system, including sensitivity to different workload and environment parameters. And we also empirically compare our system against checkpointing and replication techniques. I encourage you to look at our paper for these results. In summary, we characterize the behavior of Harvest VMs. This enabled us to use distribution-based predictions to guide scheduling and resource acquisition decisions. 
these allow us to make effective use of harvested cloud resources for long, uninterruptible workloads. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.